Telcom Business, behind South African businesses' drive to thrive. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial SME. I'm your host, Rems Mabote. This week we explore bootstrapping and how small businesses can use the strategy to tap into opportunities for growth. Local entrepreneur and co-founder of Laxity, Michael Zahariev, joins me to break down this concept for startups. Whew, Michael, that was a big word, bootstrapping. But before <laughs> we even get there, who's Laxity? Well, Laxity is Africa's largest pre-owned luxury reseller. Uh, we resell products from Louis Vuitton, Rolex, Gucci, luxury items like this. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, four stores across the country, Santon City, Waterfront, uh, Gateway, uh, as well as being the first omni-channel retailer. Excellent. So, what is bootstrapping in English? Well, bootstrapping is essentially growing your business from its own cash flow and profit. So not growing it based on financing or external funds. Is it doable? Well, of could, course. Could, could I ever grow <laughs> from a, a, a 20,000 turnover business to a 20 million turnover business over the years through bootstrapping? Well, I mean, just to give your viewers some context, 99% uh, of startups in South Africa are run on a bootstrapping yeah. model. And it's quite different to, you know, this... In, in this institutional uh, way we're taught, you know, you have to get a funding, you need some bank finance or a startup investor, you need a business plan. You know, that's not really how most businesses grow, especially in a climate, uh, in a third world country where it's very difficult to access funding. Even in a first world country, it's yep. difficult. But in South Africa, and based on what's happened in the macroeconomics now, more than ever, it's more difficult. So certainly it's not only possible, it's something that's very common. Uh, and I think that's important to understand. For example, Luxity, uh, my company, yep. started as a bootstrapped company. We started with 20 handbags, you know, working out of uh, an office part-time, uh, doing everything ourselves. And last year, we were ranked 37th fastest growing company in Africa. That's all without any external financing. Excellent. So <clears throat> does it mean that the, the, the current funding environment, as you say, is tough or it's not necessarily something that a small company should look for when they could grow themselves through bootstrapping? Well, I think an entrepreneur and any business person needs to see what's realistic for them. So if you're able to obtain funding through friends and family or through a bank or through a startup investor, then that's a great route for you to go. It's going to open up some possibilities for you. But it's not always feasible, and that shouldn't stop you. You know, you're not always going to have what you feel is a great idea at the start. You're not always going to feel like your business is going to be a billion rand company. But the important part is to get started. So how do I get started? I always say, you know, for anyone looking to be an entrepreneur, make that first step. If you're an employee, how do I make something or start a business that's going to cover my salary? Yeah. That's the first step. And then from there, when you're great raising more money through buying and selling or offering your service what's the next step when am i going to be able to afford an employee so i can use my time to invest in business strategy or in other parts of the business and then from there you can grow and grow and that organic growth is a lot easier especially for a new entrepreneur to understand than you know raising funds, understanding the macroeconomic climate, how is the currency exchange going to impact my investors, etc. And that's something we should be talking about because it doesn't get enough light that there is another route and it's actually often an easier route for you to understand how your business and how to grow it faster. Practically, I'd, I'd like you to talk to us about how a simple business could bootstrap and get themselves going and growing. Well, the first thing is to concentrate on your cash flow. So even a funded business, you know, they, they really struggle with this. And with the bootstrap business, you have to focus on your cash flow from day one. The reality is if you don't have funding, you're not going to be able to pay your bills at the end of the month if there's no money in your bank account. But that also makes it simpler because you can look at your bank account and know exactly how your business is doing. Yeah. If it's going down faster than it's going up, then you've got a problem. So really focusing on your cash flow, thinking how do I at the end of this month have more money in my bank account than I did at the start. Yeah. Very basic. And then after that, 
understanding what can I do with this little bit of extra accumulated funds that it's going to mean next month I have even more money mm. in my bank account. So knowing where to invest that. Sometimes, like I mentioned, it can be an employee. Sometimes it can be a Facebook advertising campaign, etc. But it's that frugality in a sense or that uh, lack of money sometimes it makes us make the best decisions because you need to make sure that you are making the right decision you can't just guess at it you know if it's someone else's money <coughs> you can just guess at it generally but from where i sit i think bootstrapping would mean that one has to be exceptionally patient that you're not going to make it tomorrow and become wealthy like other people right you always investing back into the business and growing and taking as you say one more employee one more ad with the how many people are capable of doing that? Well, I think that's what we need to highlight, that patience is actually really important in any business. And the fact is, in a bootstrapping business, if you have hold of your cash flow, you're able to buy yourself more time. You don't have a limit. If you're surviving, right, you have an unlimited amount of time so long as you're surviving. And the, the reality is opportunities present themselves over time. So the longer you're around, the more opportunities will present themselves to you. If you're in a finance business, generally you'll get one year's worth of runway. If you can't find a way to make it or if the right opportunity doesn't present itself in that year, it doesn't matter how good your business idea was or how hard you worked, you've run out of time. Yeah. So that patience is key to running a good business because if you keep that patience on and you keep looking for the opportunities you will finally find something that really allows you to take hold of it and grow it and on top of it while you're being patient you're going to get a better and better understanding of your business and what works and what doesn't work so you're able to really uh, leverage any opportunity that presents itself could i bootstrap my ba myself backwards like <laughs> i've grown like laxity but things becoming tough could i go back and say maybe i should start working from the boot of my car uh, well, I downsizing by the way, is, I think what you're referring to. Yeah. I mean, of course, a lot of the time we overinvest, you know, we focus, a lot of businesses will focus on growth and they don't care about efficiency. So once this things start working, you know, I'm investing now in online marketing, I'm investing in billboards, I'm investing all over the show. I don't really know what's working. Something's working, but it's not working in general. So yes, a lot of the time we need to stop and look at what's working, you know, understand where to cut back so that we're able to, you know, grow our bottom line eventually. And it's not just about having money in your bank account, but it's also at the end of the day, you want to have profit. And once you get past that first hurdle of making it day by day, it's about how do I grow my profit year by year. We will be back with more on the entrepreneurial SME. Don't touch that dial. <laughs>